good to see you all here. It really is. Uh, it's good. We're on our way back from this pandemic, from Hurricane Michael. I know Hurricane Michael was back in 2018, but it just seems like the Satan had done everything he could to shut down the works of God, especially at this little church here. It is uh, Hurricane Michael Command, and you know what? We ended up with a prettier sanctuary, didn't we? I mean, in a better church. Mm -hmm. This God is used used to bad and made good out of it. And that's wonderful, because that, that's what God does. But let me open up with a word of prayer here right now before we get into God's word, because we've got some very interesting things here today. Father God, as we open your word here this morning, Lord, I just ask, Father, that you would just take and just anoint me with the Holy Spirit. Just fill me up to overflowing, Father, that I can preach your word, God, that uh, it will be pleasing to you, Father. And I pray, God, that your word would go out and touch hearts and change lives as only you can, Father, and praise you for that. So I just pray this all in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, I remember back in the 60s and 70s, there was a phrase came out that uh, just, man, I mean, it was just like crazy. Just everybody was saying it, you know, and it just, uh, everybody had it on the bumper stickers on their cars and everything, and it was just simply this. Keep on trucking. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Keep on trucking. You know, we're in this time now when things are, are looking bad and everything, I mean, tell you, uh, you heard me say, if you want to have a happy life, shut the news off. You know, if you want to have a real happy life, shut the TV off. I'm preaching to myself right now. And I got to be careful because my wife's sitting back here now. And so I have to be very cautious of what I say. But it's, uh, I'm a kind of a, I'm a TV addict. I really am. I got to get up in the morning. I got to get my fix. You know, I turn that TV on and, and uh, she's, got me to where I just don't turn it on as early as I used to and I try not to because it's, you just get so absorbed in it. You know, and it's, it pretty, pretty soon you, the half of the day is gone and what have you accomplished? A little blurry eyes, well tears, you know, dry eyes or whatever running down your eyes. But I want you to know something, that God is still in control. Amen? Amen? I mean, we talk about all things are so, how bad everything is, but you look back in the Bible, we're not, this is really nothing new. They just got different paint on it. They got different chrome on it, but it looks, you know, it's the same thing when you read it. God uh, and the devil have been battling this over for thousands of years, and guess who the pawns are? That's us. And we say, well, the churches today, they're getting so mixed up that the evil's coming to churches. Guess how evil is getting into the churches? On the backs of the people that are coming in. Yeah. Because Satan only has the power. He only has what we allow him to have. What we give him. It, it is sad because we, are, we can tap into the greatest power in the universe. As a matter of fact, it's the power that created the universe. That's God. We can tap into that power because we're his children. And you know, he wants nothing but the best for us. He doesn't want us to live secondhand lives. God did not make junk. Don't ever think yourselves being junk. God did not make junk. We are much, much better than that. And you know what? I'm just might go to preach this sermon I got here in front of me today. How many times have you heard me say that? I'm going to start looking down now a little bit. So I see everybody where you're all at. And, and so I'm just going to go ahead now. But regardless of life, no matter what station is in life we are, no matter what's going on around us, we need to keep that slogan, keep on trucking. Just keep on trucking. And God, that's what he wants. But you know why? Because he's there with us. He's got us by the hand. He takes us by the hand. And he leads us through these dark places. He leads us. You know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is there by me. You know, I would, I would be scared to death. I remember things I've gone through, and you know, it's really worried me. Why? Because I wasn't a Christian at the time. I didn't have God leading me through these places. But this, since I've accepted the Lord Jesus 
Christ is my Savior. He's there with me all the time. By the way, let me, just a second, folks, in the sanctuary here. Hey, folks, all you out there on the internet, I want to say hi to you again. I just, I'm sorry I didn't. I, I get so excited sometimes, I just want to get going here. But hey, if you want to you really get excited, well, you come on down here and join us. I feel like that used car said, come on down here, come on down here. You just call BR549. Y'all remember that? <laughs> All right. But do you think just maybe that the person who coined that phrase might have got it from God's word? Huh? You think? You think might have? I think so. This was God's message to Israel and to us today. Keep on trucking. Regardless of how hard life may get, don't give up. Don't ever give up. That was that was uh, uh, with, uh, yeah, Churchill saying, was, never, give up, never, never give up, never give up, never give up. You know, we're looking at, maybe we're just looking at the world today, never give up. God is still there and he wanted, he's got great things for us. You know, he's got a great future for us and, and where we're going. And if you're a born again Christian, you know where you're going. We're not. Go we don't have to have doubt. We don't have to worry because God says in His Word that be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. And that's one thing you think we can take, and you can write checks on that. You can take that to the bank, folks, because that's a Word of God saying that. And we we need to realize just how much that is. But just you know, let me let me say this to you. You all got gopher turtles around your house? Uh, oh, I do. Yeah. And I had one day, I had a snapping turtle. I'm telling you, I don't even know if I could get it into a wash tub. Never to the wash tub. That's how big that turtle was. And I was watching that turtle, and that thing, he, I was afraid of it. I, I really was, because it was so big. I, I tried to go and get a look at it, and get up on its legs and start hissing. But you know one thing about that turtle? For that turtle to get anywhere, it had to stick its neck up. Yeah. And are we kind of like that? We gotta sometimes get out of our safety, our comfort zone, and stick our neck out a little bit, and, and start doing things for the Lord. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that kind of right? Oh, come on now. Come on, agree with me. Come on. Amen. Huh? Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Woo, all right. We're gonna get going here yet. But what did God say to Israel in those dark days? Well, we're going to listen, because I'm going to be reading them to you just a moment here. But listen closely, and he's speaking those words today, starting at verse 8 in Isaiah 41, verse 8 to 13. Now, my dear wife gave me this verse uh, 10, and I said, well, that, you know, I said, there's a sermon in that verse 10. And then I said, no, wait a minute, I'm going to expand it a little bit and go to verse 8 to 13. And it says, starting at verse 8, and though, and though, but thou, Israel, uh, art my servant, Jacob, who I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. And it says, that, uh, Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men <coughs> excuse me, thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Then verse 10 it says, Fear not. This is a verse that we need to highlight, underline, or however you want to do it. Memorize it. Have a tattooed on your arm, you know, wear it and, and write it on a paper and put it on your forehead or put it on the mirror or somewhere. Because when we start feeling down, we start feeling overwhelmed with uh, things going on around us. You just read this verse here. Fear thou not. That's God saying that. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Wow, what a promise that is. I'll tell you what, that's this. That, I was going to do my John Wayne imitation, but I tried it back in Sunday school and nobody recognized what it was. So I'm not going to do it here because there's a lot more critics here. Okay, and then verse 11. Behold, all that they were, uh, uh, insist against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they shall be nothing. Nothing, they'll be gone. And they will uh, strive with thee shall perish. 
So all the folks that are coming against you, the ones that are talking bad about you, the ones that are trying to do harm to you, God says he's going to take care of them for you. Don't you worry about it. God's going to fight your battles for you. Like, just like he did for the nation Israel. And he fought their battles. And look at he sent Gideon down there. Gideon and 300 men against all the other bad people. And you know what? God chased them all off. God gave them direct. This is the battle plan. This is what you're going to do. And they did it and they, uh, they all ran for cover. Because why? God's bigger than all of them. And you know what? It's just like and when Jesus was on the cross and he said he could have called 10,000 angels. Wow. But he didn't. He didn't do that. He stayed on that cross for us, for you, for me, for all of us, the whole world. He didn't have to. He could have left, got down off that cross and went to heaven right then. He's not had it with us, but he didn't. You know why? Love kept him on that cross. Love kept him there. Love for all of us. That's something you don't hear much of today, but that's so true. And then verse 12, Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. This is the people that are against you. And even then, uh, even then, uh, that uh, contend with you, even them that contend with thee, they will war against you, uh, thee shall be as nothing. Don't worry about it. There's a thing of naught. Verse 13, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying with thee, fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, I will help thee. You know, that's something when a neighbor tells a neighbor, hey, buddy, you need help putting that fence up, you need help doing so, I'll give you a hand. But when God says, fear not, I will help thee, do we take him at his word? Do we say, praise the Lord, or do we say, hallelujah? And I know I'm getting a little excited here right now, but it, does, it just can't help but get excited when you think about God, the Lord Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, says, I will help thee. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm telling you. Come on now. The Lord God Almighty is going to help thee. Amen? Amen. Michael, I gotta, I'm telling you, we got to start getting microphones out there. So. <laughs> More often, you got to get them trained. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But here's the first one. I want to get to the main divisions here hear this, these verses now. To fear not. Boy, I tell, that is so good. That is, if we could take that and wrap our head around it and just realize Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit are saying, fear not. Fear not. Don't worry about it. Ain't no big thing. Don't mean a thing. Y'all heard that before. Don't mean a thing. Well, the people have come, they want to do bad, they want to do harm, they want to do all these things. And you know what? God says to you, you're not. The ones that are wanting to do you bad ought to be saying, you're going to get it. God's going to get you. Because you don't bother with my people. You don't hurt my people. They're my people. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm getting better right <laughs> Verse 8 10. That says, so fear not. Right there. It tells you. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe his Bible? Do you believe this? Do you believe all this what's in this Bible? Or do you say, that's an interesting book. Hey, I really like it because it's genuine leather. I love the smell of that. You know, it is. But I know what's inside it more. God's love letter to me. He had all the people write the 66 books of the Bible, and he had them write it for me. Oh, and you can read it too. And all you folks out there on the internet, you can read it too. But it's just a love letter. And somebody told me it was a, it's a what was it, basic instructions before leaving earth? Yeah, that's it, preparing us helping us through this world so when we leave here, we know where we're going. We don't have to worry. Well, then to faint not. This is good. 
this is really good to fake not. Because when you're getting down, people are getting on you, and things are going bad. And you know what? Too much month and not enough money. You know, too much month at the end of the money, I should say, like that. We don't have to worry. Because I tell you what I do. Let me tell you what I do. You know, if I'm a little late paying a bill and they start yelling at me and sending me all kinds of nasty letters, I just don't put their name on the list next month. You know, that's, that's, you know, then they leave me alone. No, we are to be honest in our dealings. I had a couple of good jokes too. I was going to tell you, but I can't remember them now. <laughs> think about when you feel so overwhelmed. You feel like giving up. I don't know if you ever fainted. I know swooned, whatever you want to call it. It just it's just something like it really just goes kind of dark, doesn't it? Just and then you wake back up and you say, Well, where was all those problems that caused this? What happened? Well, I think God took care of it. He says, faint not. He wants you to be strong. He wants you to not just survive, but to strive, to be great. He wants us to be better than we are. He wants us to stretch our limits. It's like a rubber band. And I love this illustration. A rubber band, you put it in your hand, and what good is it? You know, but if you take it, when you start stretching it, and you put it around something, and it holds something together, that's what you, the rubber band really does good. And that's sometimes that what we need. We need to kind of get out of our comfort zone, get stretched up, because you know why? That's when we realize, God is taking care of me. I didn't have to worry about this. I've got new. I've grown. Look at me. As Dolly and I were talking about peonies, but I think that's the word for the flowers. Uh, we used to have them up north, and they're beautiful flowers. But uh, when they were around, you know, when they were just a, a bud, I remember seeing ants all over. Them. And I thought, what in the world? Look at the ants. That plant's no good, it draws ants. Then somebody said, it has to. It has to, the ants have to eat that covering off the flower so it can come out. And I thought, well, isn't God marvelous? I, that's just marvelous how he just put all this together and just for my benefit so I could see those beautiful flowers. But isn't that kind of like us, don't we? Don't we have a shell sometimes on us that it just needs to be chipped away? It just needs to be taken down off us to free us up so we can blossom? Or are we going to stay in, like a old ca caterpillar, stay in a cocoon instead of coming out and being that butterfly that God wants us to be? Think not. Stay strong. Remember that old song, Happy Days Are Here Again? That's maybe what we ought to start singing. But here's, here's another one. It's verse 13. Forget not. What do you think God means about that forget not? Well, this is what I, I picture. Guess who created the heavens and the earth? Who hung all the stars, the moon, and all of the moon, and made created us? Do we forget? Or do we listen to the atheist in that saying. It was just a big bang and man crawled out of the, promoter, the ooze and we out the mud and he slid up onto the, the dry ground and then he developed legs and he got rid of his tail. He didn't swim that well anymore. He said, I don't swim that well anymore. But uh, you know, it's just amazing. And, and then it created, the, it turned into a monkey. And the monkey was in the tree. And pretty soon the monkey got down out of the trees. And, and they say that we're related to the monkeys. And I tell them this, that might be your uncle, but it's not mine. 
You know, I don't have a mon I'm not a monkey's uncle. No. God breathed the breath of life into man and created him, and his word of God says that, and I don't care what some people say, I almost called them something I shouldn't have, but I don't care what they say, it's a lie. It's a lie of the devil, and the Bible tells them it's a devil is a father of lies. He created them and he makes him keep going. It's like, like, like this man. Uh, you just reminded me of my joke there, so I'm going to tell that joke. <laughs> this man got up and walked out of the service during the middle of the sermon. So after the service, his wife says to him, uh, the preacher says, Pastor, says, I hope you don't run it. mine, but my husband, you know, that was nothing personal with you. It, you know, he just, when he got up and walked out, it don't, don't take it to heart and everything, because the pastor was a little perplexed when people started getting up, you know. And so she says, listen, Pastor, my husband's been sleepwalking since he was an early age, you know, three or four, so don't think nothing personal. <laughs> Think on that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't mind you folks, you know, getting a little nervous and looking at your watches, but please don't start going and doing this. <laughs> okay? All right. Forget not. Forget not. And you know, and I'm going to close this now because we're getting up here to close to everybody going to lunchtime. <laughs> All right. The best thing I can say to you. What we need all to remember, just keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Keep it, like they used to tell me when I was driving a truck. And our favorite thing when we were saying the Bible was keep the greasy side down, the shiny side up. So keep on trucking. Amen? Amen. All right. Please pray with the Bible here. Father God, I, I just pray, Lord, and I thank you, Father, for the folks that have come and joined the church this morning. Lord, and I just praise you for that, God. And I praise you for how you're moving here in this church. And how, God, it's just so exciting to see you working. God, I just thank you for the, the visitors that we have here. Lord, and I just praise you for that. God, I want to lift up all the children now. Lord, that are going back to school. I just can't, it's been on my mind, Lord, so much. I pray for their safety. All around this world, God, the children, they're not, they've been treated like targets so many times. God, just be with them, keep them safe, keep the evil out of the schools, God, and just good learning in there. And Lord, I just pray that they would let you back in too. Father, just thank you for what you're doing. God, if there be someone here uh, that needs prayer or whatever they need, Father, I just pray, God, that they would get up and come down. We're going to have a short invitation now. Of course, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, if you're able, would you please stand for the invitation? Like I said, it's going to be a short one because we're going to have our business meeting following here.